In this example I'm going to illustrate how to use the E squared PROM, the uh, static memory uh, that withstands power on off of the uh, ESP8266. So to begin with you need to include the E squared PROM uh, library. I'll just set up a serial port to show the results and then define how much E squared PROM you want. So that's its format E squared PROM dot begin size. Um, the value of the size can be anywhere between uh, 4 and 496 bytes. So in my example here I'll just use 32 bytes. Um, throughout the example I've tried to illustrate, so there's 32 bytes, I've tried to illustrate, illustrate what is in the E squared prom. And the commands available to you are E squared prom put at some address, some variable. That's quite important to uh, grasp that principle and you can also get or read the variable from that address and any variable name, it doesn't matter what variable name you use. Note that the um, the address has to be incremented by the variable type. So if you save a, this is a 32-bit CPU, so if you save an integer value, you will use the first four bytes of the E squared prop. So the first variable will be stored where I've highlighted. The next variable, next integer variable will be stored there. And if you write a floating point variable, a normal floating point variable, it will be stored there. And if you st uh, stored a uh, floating point variable, a double size or double precision floating point, it would be saved in those bytes there. There, eight. Make sure I've got that count right. If you save a Boolean variable, it takes one byte. If you take a st store a string variable, it, it stores as many characters as a minimum of twelve, but as many bytes, sorry, as there are characters in the in the string. So those are the commands available: putting a variable, getting a variable, reading a byte, single byte writing a byte distinct from reading a variable and writing a variable these are the commands for doing the variables committing so although you you could um, put a variable into e squared prom um, all that happens is it, it copies it into a ram copy of e squared prom and it's not until you issue this command that the RAM is written over to the E squared PROM. And there's a complementary command called E squared PROM end, which writes the E squared PROM and clears the RAM as well. Real balance, that's the one to use. Just put some examples here to show the different, how much storage, so the size of a floating point variable, the size of a double double precision floating point and integer billion and string just as a little aid memoir so that I've got a number of examples now um, about seven eight examples so the first example is write a value to the squared prom so assume that the squared prom is all zero um, assign the address to zero so pointing here now write to e squared prom e squared prom address zero the value one two three um, so to begin with nothing is in the e squared prom it's blank uh, when you issue that command ram is updated to these values here when you commit the storage then the e squared prom indeed gets written with one two three or hexadecimal seven b and 
this example here confirms that, which we'll see in a second. Um, e squared prom right to address 0257 deliberately um, made it incorrect. Um, commit the value. More gets written is 1 because it's only a byte that's being written. So it's modulus 256. So 256 and 257 is 1. And indeed, that's the value that gets written there. Confirm by that printout in a second. Next example is um, putting a variable, uh, defining a variable into, called integer variable, giving it a value 257. Putting it, so putting writing or putting a variable to e squared prom, committing it, and uh, when it's finished, that's what's in the memory in the e squared prom. One byte with a value of 256 and another byte with a value of 1 is 257 and again that proves it and to prove that it was actually retrieving from e squared prom I've made the value 0 and then read that in. Next one is a slightly bigger um, and a new integer variable but this time because I'm saving I've saved the first integer variable in those four bytes there. So now I'm going to write a second um, integer variable uh, to the next available slot. So you have to move the integer address along by the size of an integer. So now it's going to write the values of the integer into those four bytes there. And again that illustrates and that's working correctly. Now a, uh, a floating point variable so assigned an arbitrary value, in this case the value of pi. Uh, move the address along. Uh, so there's the first byte, second byte. So now it's going to write the floating point to the next four bytes uh, assigned. So address equals eight by this time and that confirms it and prints out the value that it's just read back. Next I'm going to um, write a string variable and the string is simple hello world and moves the address pointer along to um, hold the size of the string and then writes the string to e squared prom and then reads it back and prints. Next I was just showing how to write um, a series of values to e squared prom and read them back. Nothing really unusual in that example it just shows that um, you have to do the writing or do all of your writing activities and then finally commit which commit means copy the RAM copy to e squared prom. You could put there commit dot end which was that uh, other alternative version clears the RAM as well. Um, in your programs keep checking that you don't exceed the address and it's probably best to wrap around so if you go past the address if you use up all of the uh, e squared prom address best to go back to zero you get unspecified program results if you don't um, there is an easier way of uh, writing values to e squared prom and incrementing the e squared prom address pointer and I've given us some examples there of writing an integer and a floating point uh, committing the values to e squared prom and then reading them back and printing okay so now I'll compile and upload that program now we'll just monitor the program when it runs
and there all the values come back so it's printing out the number of bytes required for the variables um, the 1 2 3 integer the 2 5 7 integer that got wrapped around to 1 then 2 5 7 as an integer variable and then 1 2 3 4 as an integer variable the floating point the hello world the writing multiple values to e squared prom and saving to pi and then bringing that printing that out and then that large number there is an integer value and then re retrieving that and printing that and then the whole thing starts again well i hope you found that useful that's how you write to e squared prom with the esp 8266